Lads, how are we doing? Welcome back to episode two of the Championship Show. Um, and Adam's back again. Um, we've, we've, we've kept him on. He impressed on his debut, so you're in for episode two, Adam. Yeah, delighted that that's the case, Mace. Thank you. Uh, I was a bit uh, concerned about my performance last week, but no, I've managed to, to do enough to please the TSF crew, so as, as, happy uh, days. Yeah, as January transfers go, you seem to have hit the ground running, so that's, um, <laughs> let's, let's hope that continues. Um, Too you, kind. I was actually, that would have been a really good way to segue into, there's been, we'll come to transfers later on, but we're going to kick off with the weekend and we might as well kick off where we previewed in the last episode the big game at Tynecastle last Saturday, Hearts 1, Dunfermline 0, um, a game that surprised me in many different ways, um, but Adam, from your point of view, three points, based on that 90 minutes, three points is a, a very good, um, but perhaps... Uh, surprising outcome based on how the game went for Hearts? It, it's, a, it's a pleasing but sort of almost unwarranted return, I think. Um, looking back last week, I, I was funny. I was watching the championship scores come in on a soccer Saturday and I was thinking, I've had an absolute mare here. There's no way I'll be invited back, um, <laughs> particularly with obviously Hearts getting that result. But I just thought that upon watching the game, I feel as though a draw would have been a fair result. But ultimately that the Pars were punished for their missed opportunities. Craig Gordon pretty much proved the difference, didn't he? And yeah. Owen Fawn Williams was called into action a couple of times, but I just feel as though the goalkeepers... It says it speaks volumes about the game when the goalkeepers were arguably the two standout performers. Um, and the save from Ryan Dow, in particular from Craig Gordon, is an absolute disgrace. Yeah, it's Absolutely not, no it's right to right say that. I said it to every the film fan I spoke to post-match who was annoyed... I said, when you go to Tynecastle and the man of the match is Craig Gordon, it tells you everything you need to know from a Dunfermline point of view. You're right, we, we rude the missed chances. Um, a point would have been a fair result, but I, I don't think anyone would have, would have uh, begrudged it if we'd taken all three on the balance of play. No, no, I, I, um, absolutely not, mate. But, I mean, chances. McManus especially had a couple he should have scored. But what a start. I couldn't believe the start to the game. We're flying out the blocks, two big <laughs> chances right at the start. And I was thinking, oh, my God. And, I, I mean, you can't go to Tynecastle and have five, six, seven chances, um, albeit some half chances, but there was maybe three or four good chances in there, and you can't go there and miss them. And that, um, up until last night, which we'll come on to, had kind of been the story for Dunfermline recently where we're just not taking it, but Jamie Walker off the bench. Um, moment of magic, sucks you and Murray in, and it's a lovely turn and a great finish. Yeah, and to be honest, I'm, I'm pretty annoyed that uh, Jamie Walker was left on the Dame duty. I've got to be honest, that just feels though, Stephen Naismith over the 90 didn't contribute a great deal. And Jamie Walker had performed so impressively at Starks Park um, in the midweek leading up to the game. So it was good to see that he still obviously came on with a point to prove. And the, the spin was Dennis Bergkamp-esque. Yeah. The finish, I don't know whether that's... I don't know whether it's intended. I, I see a lot of debate whether it was a cross, was it a shot. Ultimately, he's chucked it in the mixer and... Despite Liam Boyce's best efforts, it, it's kissed off the post and gone in to grab a largely undeserved but hard-fought victory for us. Yeah, and even at that point, I thought it was absolutely game, game, game done. But I, I mean, I don't think they hadn't we had any big chances after that. But still, I think immediately went up the park with a couple of corners and stuff. And you're thinking just the pressure we've had. And this is the thing I think I mentioned it last week, where Dunfermline fans some have kind of got this unrealistic expectation we should be challenging you guys because of these head-to-head -head games. I mean. I'll be honest, that's two times we've played Hearts now and neither time have I gone, wow, there's a gulf here. I mean, you can tell in terms of like having someone like Walker's quality on the bench is the reason Hearts will win the league because they've got that quality squad. Um, you know, I could come up with big moments. Um, but I mean, on the day, just frustrating, man. Absolutely frustrating. And if it wasn't for what happened last night, I'd be a little bit more upset about it. But um, yeah, I suppose after, from a Hearts point of view, after the Rovers defeat, the week prior to then beat them at Starks and then win at the weekend. That was kind of a, an important turnaround for Robbie Nielsen. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess there's a reason why we're here, isn't there? So it just, I, I don't know. I, I just felt, I felt somewhat disappointed. And I, I know that reeks of kind of arrogance and cockiness, but I think given how well Dunfermline had played at East End Park, I was sort of expecting some sort of revenge mission in, oh, in the return <laughs> fiction. Yeah, and it just it just didn't appear to to arrive that way. That's obviously yeah. why I had my my prediction, which I don't want to touch on too much. But um, but no, I just I, I'm pleased we move on. It's yeah. it's as simple as that, really. I'll be honest. I think actually the game last weekend, 
I think we actually created more, certainly in terms of definitely open play than we did at East End. So, I mean, it was a, a strange one. But yeah, three points for Hearts and, you know, um, they, they march on um, towards what looks like looks like a title. I can say that. You, I can get away with saying that. So it's okay. <laughs> um, right, let's kick on. We'll go to... We spoke about transfers and your January transfer over at TSF. Let's talk about another January transfer who started with a bang. Jack Hamilton at Arbroath. Signed Thursday, trained Friday, scored Saturday. Brilliant. Morton Nell Arbroath won and a massive win for Dick Campbell's men. Yeah, it's surprising that it's only their second league win so far this season. Um, and obviously, I couldn't believe the start when I, I heard it. But it's their first one at Capelo since 1977. Is that right? but it's one of those um, they like just missed each other so often in terms of leagues yeah yeah, pro, uh, yeah if you if you break it down maybe not quite as impressive but uh, like you say Jack Hamlin he seems to prove a real useful acquisition already it's a topsy-turvy campaign for him because he was on loan at East Fife grabbed a couple goals there then was recalled by Livy scored in the Premiership for them against Ross County and now he's on loan at Championship Arbroath so yeah. it's uh, quite the campaign so far but yeah just Obviously, he'll be absolutely delighted to go off to that start. As a striker, there's always that kind of onus as to when the first goal will, ar- when the first goal will arrive. Sorry, mm-hmm. And the fact is, obviously, proved on his debut. He'll be absolutely ecstatic with that, I'm sure. It's absolutely mental because you said he's played for Livingston. I'm pretty sure, well, he definitely started in the win against Celtic. And I think he started against Rangers earlier on in the season. That might have been his first game back. Um, so he's, he's kind of done it all this season. But um, yeah, I mean, and he's, he's a big physical player. He's obviously got an eye for goal. Any sort of team in the championship would have been delighted, I think, to sort of snap him up. So a big coup for our growth. And as he said, we said it last week, amazing. That's one of their second win because, you know, they, they give better, a better account of themselves than, than perhaps their their form had suggested. Now, that game at the weekend made it three unbeaten. Obviously, we know last night they, they made it four unbeaten. But, I mean, with, with Alawa losing the air, which we'll, we'll kind of segue into now, a big weekend for our growth. But Alawa, I mean, I looked at the stats from that game. 4-1 to Air. it finished. Both sides had four shots on tar- uh, five shots on target. Air took four of them. Um, and that was the difference, really. Apart from that, it was a, a relatively easy game. So for Peter Grant, disappointment, and even more so when you see our growth get the win. Absolutely, yeah. I was just going to say that coupled with that um, Aloha defeat at Air, it obviously is a big disappointment. But it just, I think, as you say, the, the scoreline looks to flatter the honest men, particularly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I caught the highlights it's a real shame for Alan Trouton as well because his goal was an absolutely ridiculous oh. effort. You can you can file it under your your Beckhams, your Rooney's, all that sort of gang. Um, it's so it's just a shame that it, it came in that four one defeat. So I also watched the highlights and I just feel as though Stefan Skugel had a great chance at one all. The header that sort of there's a ball whipped into the box and he must be about six six yards out um, and he heads and obviously Sinisal um, collects. But I think Al will be kicking themselves somewhat because not just that chance, on another day, uh, coupled with taking that opportunity, obviously, I think we could have seen a different outcome at Somerset uh, at the weekend. It was a big, big win for her as well. I mean, you look at them, they've had a bit of a rocky time of it recently. Um, They're now three points off Dundee, who obviously got beat off Rovers again, we'll come to that. But uh, to kind of stay in that playoff hunt, it was huge that they won that game, especially at home to Alawa, games you kind of have to win. Um, So for Mark Kerr now, I mean... I, you always think of air at the start of the season, they're going to be there, thereabouts, the playoffs. Maybe now they'll put a run together, who knows? Um, but yeah, I mean, Dundee, we'll come on to Dundee and Wraith because that was a, a big, big game, two big games last weekend. Dundee um, travelling to Starks and, you know, I, 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 to be honest, I thought Dundee might edge it just because they've been on a, a good run recently. They look to really be putting some, some momentum together. But for them now to get 3-1 there... They'll look at that and think, if we'd have won, that's us right back in the hunt. I mean, now there's still that little bit of a gap between Dundee and, and Dunfermline especially. But if they'd have won at the weekend, their tails are up, they're thinking, right, if anyone can catch Hearts, you're probably thinking it would be Dundee at that point. I think so. And I think Saturday's performance, it just became so apparent that their defensive absence, uh, their defences, uh, sorry, their defensive absences were apparent. Um, obviously caught napping for the first goal. The short corner sees Kyle Benedict's head. I was going to say, it's, it's quite just... fitting that your speech was all over the place talking about Dundee's defence. <laughs> <laughs> telling you. But I completely agree. They're, they're, they've been for like the past like, 18 months, they've been honking at the back and it cost them time and time again. Yeah. And um, what was it? No Liam Fontaine, Jordan Foster, Lee Ashcroft, I think was ill. So it's just, it just, I think when you're building a squad, 
or in particular in this case, a team, a couple key starters and you you really are toiling. And that just looked the case for Dundee. Although I'm surprised that Wraith managed to cope so well without Reagan Henry in the midfield, which was, yeah, like I say, just a bit of a shock. But I'm, I'm taking a real liking to Wraith Rovers, much to your dismay probably, just given their attacking options. I, I think we know that the big boys, uh, Duku and Ugu are a handful. Now you've got Lewis Vaughan back in the equation. Jamie Gullins obviously signed on loan from Hibs, which we'll touch on. And yeah. Timmy, Ab- uh, Timmy Abraham was given his debut here. So plenty of ammunition for Rovers. Um, but this, the star man at the minute is, is Kai Kennedy. I'm glad you came on to him. I thought you were going to forget about him. I was like, I thought no. you were going to forget him. No, you can't he, forget about him. He's been flying, hasn't he? He's no relation to me before the rumours start, <laughs> but he is just phenomenal. Looks yeah. a real, real talent. And you can see why Rangers hold him in such high regard. Yeah, and uh, you know the, he impressed up at Inverness, and then obviously he's hit the ground running at Rovers. You know, lit it up at Tynecastle in that game, and, and and got another goal last weekend. I have to say, he was absolutely anonymous last night at East End. But again, we'll come to that. Um, but yeah, a massive result for Wraith, and you're right; they've got such an abundance of attacking options. And Lewis Bond's a really interesting one because, I mean, on his day, fantastic footballer, but he's had, I think, three ACL injuries in his career now. It's just the fact that he's still playing professional football is remarkable with the with the luck he's had, but. Yeah, big, big win for Rovers. And just when you think maybe they might start to slip off a little bit, they're they're still hanging in there. So for a, C, for a team just promoted, they're very much in the playoff hunt. So yeah, a massive result for them over Dundee. Osman So scored again, by the way. I mean, because he's... I, I was going to say, and Paul McMullen sort of had that impact where he crosses in. From. I think Dundee are a funny one. I think defensively there's still sort of question marks from me but I think it's only a matter of time before it clicks offensively we'll touch on another January signing in Jason Cummings who obviously made his cameo off the bench at Starks and I just feel as though with Paul McMullen now in the mix so in Cummings up front Charlie Adam threading them through offensively it's, it's going to click and I expect Dundee to motor on towards the end of the campaign I think they'll be fine with regards yeah. to the playoffs but it's just like you say there's a there's a couple matches. This one being an example where it's a sort of what if scenario. Had they ground out results, would they be closer to Hearts up the top of the table? So it's just one of those things, I suppose. Yeah, it's an interesting point. And just before we come into the midweek games and then th- this weekend's preview, I just want to talk about something that's just actually coming to my head. Really, there's I think there's a reasonable argument to be made now that the top four will be the top four. If the current top four, if you look at it, you've got Harston, Fellman, Wraith, Dundee. I'm not saying it'll be in that order, but I think you could make a pretty solid case that that would be the top four come the end of the season. But obviously we mentioned last week that Inverness have got a couple of games to play and whatever. So I think once once everybody's played the same amount of fixtures, we'll have yeah. a greater idea. But God knows I'm when that will be. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not ruling Inverness out just yet. I'm going to make that as my bold claim. There you go. That's a bold claim. That's the top four that finishes at the end of the season. There you go. That's a bold, That's claim. A bold claim. Um, um, but yeah, right. We'll move on to midweek. We'll, we'll kick off with uh, the game at Gayfield first and we'll, we'll save the best to last. Um, so yeah, I, and our both made it four unbeaten with a, a point against Inverness. Hamilton scores again, two and two. I mean, Dick Campbell must be absolutely delighted to have a striker banging him in like that. Yeah, and it's, it's funny how you mentioned last week how the championship works. There we were mouthing off about our both only having the one victory all season. Yeah. And yet they very nearly make it two in as many matches yeah, to just follow that up with. It's absolutely crazy. But yeah, Jack Hamilton, I think there's a lot of championship clubs that would have bit their hands off for Jack Dan Hamilton Fairman, alone. And Fairman would have loved them. I'd like and obviously our both seem to have just skipped to the front of the queue and they're reaping the rewards for doing so at the minute. So yeah. Yeah, and the reason I went a bit bold with the top four shout is because error are all over the place inconsistent. I spoke to a mate of mine, Inverness fan, last night, and he says people are talking about Inverness for the playoffs. He says it's the wrong sort of playoffs they're talking about. He thinks they're in real trouble oh. second half of the season. And I think that oh dear. The, game, the games in hand are, are all well and good, but the championship is the, the one league where you just want the points. Forget the games in hand, because who knows <laughs> what could happen. You know, they've got what? They've got three games in hand on the film in Inverness. I think if you offered them... Four points from them three games, they'd probably take it right now with the form they're in. I think so, anyway. And it's not like, with the way the championship works, as we've just said, anyone can beat anyone. So I'm not sure the games in hand mean as much as they would in maybe like a, a title race where you know the teams are probably going to win. So it's an interesting one. But yeah, not not great for Inverness. Um, they're really kind of struggling. So who, who knows what will happen there. And let's move on to East End Park. Last night, Terfelman 4, Wraith Rovers 1. 
We are back. We're back with a bang. Goals everywhere. Just the passing, the moving, the tempo. Just everything, mate. It was to behold. What a team we have sometimes, man. See our day, just frightening. Why can't we do this every week? Just unbelievable. And interestingly, Rovers, I think, have lost the last three midweek games, but they've won the last three on a Saturday. I saw that as well. It's, yeah, it's, it's, I talked about Morton being bipolar last week. Perhaps it's just Rovers that are yeah, taking that mantle. I can't, I can't be honest with you. I just watched that game last night, and it was just wonderful. I mean, the first goal, McManus, who's... At a, I think he's had a really good return at Dunfermline this season. Not scored as many as we'd have liked, but he was never going to do Nisbet numbers. He could have scored a couple at the weekend. Gets a brilliant first goal. I think, right, we're, we're off, we're underway here. And then you know, we'll go get the second. Um, what was the second again? Well, the second was... A hey, Comrie goal, was it? Oh, oh Aaron Comrie. Turning into, like, Cafu or Roberto Carlos. Just <laughs> bombing on about 50 yards. Smashing it in off the post. 2-0 cruising. And then... When Von Williams just drops a clanger into his neck, and I'm thinking, "Oh fuck's sake, here we go." Here we I was going to say, I was, I was going to touch on the goals because obviously I, I caught the highlights. Um, Ian Wilson seems to have earned rave reviews as well. He from had yourself, the slippers and the house coat on last night. The whole ninety <laughs> minutes, he just strolled at the that, fella. That ball to McManus was oh, a disgrace. He's just um, fantastic. He's one of those that yeah, it just spells with Wilson so much. He can be brilliant, but he has got lots to work on. But I mean, he was brilliant. But the. the the Wraith goal was, was not the best from Paul Williams. I was going to ask, I think I think the keeper could do better is a, a bit of an understatement. Yeah. It's what but, it was, though. I mean, it, it, who cares, yeah. you know? <laughs> you, had a, you had a number a, of good saves. Upon reflection, yeah. yeah, upon reflection, what does it matter? And yeah. ultimately, it could have been three points. And listen, it, it did his best to try and earn a point at Tynecastle, like you say, so you can't really fault him. And then we have to talk about Fraser Murray. I mean, it was the Fraser Murray show in that second half last night. I mean, I've read about Dom Thomas as a, as a wide player. He's not in the squad just now. He got dropped at the weekend, as did Kyle Turner, for some sort of incident that Stevie Crawford had talked about. We don't know what that is yet. Uh, Turner made the bench last night. Thomas still out. So who knows what's happening there? But he wasn't missed at all. I mean, that free kick from Fraser Murray is just a thing of beauty. Just unbelievable technique. Martin Hardy-esque, is it? Oh, <laughs> they put a video today of the two of them together. It's just gorgeous. <laughs> It's mad though. Like I mean, we were. I was saying to some of my mates last night. It's that's the games you miss not being there for. But even not being there, the mood I've had, the mood I've been in since the game last night, just cloud nine, it makes the world of difference. And then Murray gets the second to, to seal it. But it was four one going on six seven. I mean, Rovers were horrendous. And I'm I'm with you. I, I, as much as their arrivals and stuff, I've loved watching them because you know I like Hendry, I like Dylan Tate. I think they're really good. Um, you know, going forward, Armstrong's been good. Ethan Ross was good before he obviously went back to Aberdeen. They've got Kennedy now, who's a player, but I mean, Kennedy didn't, didn't touch the ball last night, really. Lewis Vaughan couldn't get a kick, was off at half time. The boy Abraham, new signing, was just woeful. I mean, dreadful bad, which amazed me because he looked like he'd be a, a real handful, big physical fella, a bit of pace, you know, but nothing happened for Rovers last night and the fans will be will be very upset. But I mean, that that even now, though, they've still got a game in hand on us and they win that we level on points. So it's very tight between the five sides for, for second place at the moment, but I'm delighted, mate. And, and quite rightly so. I just, oh. I think Rovers have a little bit to do defensively as well, don't they? J- yeah. Jamie McDonald was a great um, addition, obviously, I know about his exploits. And for me, he's a, a vastly underrated goalkeeper. But perhaps it's just a case of recruitments in front of the back, or recruitments in the back four in front of them. So we'll see. Yeah, they struggled in that. I mean, Davidson played at the back last night and he was like playing like he was in the mud. It was just wasn't there at all. Uh, miss, Be- miss Benedictus as well was a big miss for them last night. And is Ian Davidson not a central midfield player by trade anyway? Uh, well, he looked like he was not even a footballer last night by trade. So I'm not, I'm not so sure. But no, it wasn't a good night for Rovers. Great night for the <laughs> I'm going to talk about it a lot more tonight on the Pars Talk podcast on my channel. As you'll be talking a lot more about the Hearts stuff on Pars to Paisley, we'll give you a wee plug in the comments uh, in the description Thank again. You, I won't, you, won't, you won't have to remind me this time, I promise. Um, <laughs> right, anyway, let's move on to the weekend. Um, another fascinating weekend, as they always are in the Championship. And, you know, let's kick off at Somerset, because that, to me, looks like the game of the weekend, air against Hearts. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not so sure. I'm just like... Hearts have got some making up to do after the weekend for me, performance-wise. Um, and I just think that, obviously, air are flying after the weekend. So I think it'll be a, a trickier match than some Jambos might be expecting. But we just have to wait and see, I guess. 
Yeah, and I suppose for we talked about this last year with you guys not having the the sort of away trips that are kind of novelty away trips. Somerset's one, isn't it? I mean, that's one of the main. Absolutely. Ones. I was craving just being on that terracing, and the fact that obviously it's been taken away from me is just heartbreaking. But it's one of those things. I'm not sure that BBC Scotland's coverage will make up for it, but fingers no. crossed. Um, also, this time of year be fucking freezing. That's a, I mean, Somerset <laughs> is a game for like. Early end of April, early May, or, or or August time. That's when you want air away because it's just nice and sunny, nice wee day out, just super. But yeah, I mean, air are, are, are so hit and miss that. I mean, they've got players that could cause hearts problems. Whether they do it or not is is another matter. Again, though, if you guys go and slip up this weekend, it'll it'll just like put pressure on us to to get close to you. I would honestly, at this point, rather you just raced away. I remember you saying that last week. I think. Air, Air actually played some nice stuff and they gave us a real scare at Tynecastle on Boxing Day. So, yeah, that's right, so again, yeah. sort, of, sort of similar to what I was anticipating for Dunfermline. It's a kind of, I'm wanting us to adopt a sort of siege mentality and really put them to the sword, but I just I can't see that being the case at the weekend, if I'm honest. Um, I really hope that we go out and gain some decent revenge, but it just, after would you make, would you after make any that changes performance to that? The would you make any changes to the starting lineup? Obviously, Naismith came in for a bit of criticism. I know you mentioned yourself he wasn't at it, but I see I saw people talking about his performance um, with a bit more sort of harsh and emotive language than what you've used to describe his performance last weekend. Walker impressed on the bench. Obviously, Nandule has, has looked a threat. Do you think we'll make changes? Um, I don't, like I say, I don't know why Jamie Walker was taken out in the first place. Um, but uh, funnily enough, I'd, I probably wouldn't. I probably would start Stephen Naismith in this game because I'm expecting it to be absolutely grim, if I'm honest, um, on Friday night. And I just feel as though his experience, you know, Stephen Naismith's career speaks for itself and he's played at just about every level imaginable. And I just feel as though his know-how for matches like this on what's going to be, no doubt, a minging night, um, I, I feel will carry us to three points, hopefully. Well, um, yeah, you're probably right. I think this, this is sort of, certainly the sort of game for Naismith. I mean, I don't think I've ever like witnessed a player in a ground scream at his teammates as much as Naismith does. And Halliday gets it stinking off him every time I've I've seen them play. Halliday gets it stinking off Naismith. But if he's um, he needs to do a bit more than shouting, I think on Friday night to absolutely. Play it's it's funny when it, when he first came in, he was kind of like that manager on the park, and was I, I was just. I mentioned it on my podcast. I was like, this is brilliant. This He's going through all these wasters, whereas now I feel like he just ought to focus on his own game and chuck the odd occasional shout rather than... Well, it's being... one of those, like, when, you, when you're playing well, you can get away with anything, can't you? I mean... Yeah. It's, it's, the thing is, when we've got Whitaker now, who's obviously part of the coaching team, he came on last night towards the end. Whitaker's not a shouter at all. You hardly ever hear him, but you can kind of tell he's in control of everyone around him. Just like just the odd word in the year, just kind of positional stuff. But yeah, Naismith's very much a... Do you think he's still got ambitions of getting to the Euros? Do you think he's given up on that now? I, I feel as though he'll have ambitions, but I just feel as though the ship sailed, if right. I'm honest. I think if it was if it went ahead when it should have done, he'd have probably, he'd probably yeah. gone. Yeah, I think, you, I think you could have made a case for him, definitely, but I, think I don't know. It'd, yeah, it'd be, it'd be difficult to justify if you were leaving Absolutely. like Nisbet at home and taking Stephen Nays with that. Well, I was going to say, you, you'd be absolutely devastated if Kevin yeah. Nisbet was... All I want from Kevin Nisbet is for him to fucking leave for a big money transfer so we get some we get some cash coming back to us. If only, if only that Birmingham move had gone through. Mate, apparently our sale is 30%. That's massive money for us. Anyway, let's move on from that because um, I've got a whole show to talk about on film tonight, so I'm not going to take up all of this one. Um, right, let's uh, Morton versus Rafe. Why not? And you mentioned up uh, earlier about Morton being bipolar. Um, and I noticed that since I told you to go and check out Morton's like shenanigans, you've been you've been enjoying some of the stuff on Twitter. They are just hilarious. I and mean, we'll come to them with the transfer stuff because it was a, a bit of transfer gold in terms of the way they announced it. But, I mean, Rafe, can they bounce back at Capolo? I don't see why not. Just like I say, given the attacking um, prowess that, that, that they have. Um, it's just a case of shutting Morton out, who will no doubt be boosted by the signing of, is it Kaziah Sterling? Kaziah Sterling. Is that how you I say think, that? Yeah, yeah, Champions League. Yeah, League. and obviously, yeah, I was going to say, they've, they've touted him as having this Champions League experience, despite it being, what, a, a cameo for Delhi Alley, I think I saw. So, uh -huh. oh, <laughs> hey, oh, but, um, the, the funny thing about that was, I think everybody thought, 
like everyone's like, oh, it's gonna be Kyle Hutton or it's gonna be Kenny <laughs> Allen or it's gonna be like Richard Foster, and you're like, oh, please be Richard Foster. That would just be hilarious. Um, they still only have one goalie, I think. I don't think they've signed another goalie yet, Martin. They've still only got one. It's just Aidan McAdams still, yeah. And it's just Aidan McAdams and talking players that can shout and scream. D D D. Give Parasol oh. sorry, right? Anyway, um, yeah, I think that let's. We haven't. Did we, did we do a prediction for Air versus Hearts? I think we did. We didn't. No. Right, I'm gonna go with uh, three 0 Hearts. There you go. Oh, I would. I would snap your hand off for that. <laughs> um, I've said it. We minging. You know, this is this is where it will catch me out because last week I said we'd be comfy against you and it was minging. And I'm going to say it's minging and we'll probably race home to a 3 0 win now that you said that. I'll go, I'll go air nil, hearts one. That sounds a lot more likely to perfectly. A honest. snooze right. fest. On I the think box. it's going to be, uh, I think this is, you know, I've said it before where Morton have these like thing where they'll just go and get results, they've got no right in getting. And I think this weekend it's going to be Morton one, Wraith one. There you go. Ooh. She's got a funny feeling. I don't know where the Morton goal comes from. This is the thing. I'll go Morton nil, Wraith two, comfy. Oof. Comfy for the Fifers and they'll, they'll, they'll gain a reaction. You heard it here first. They're going to need to improve to get a clean sheet. Anyway, uh, right, Dundee Inverness, another big, big game. Now, I, I thought about this game. This game is absolutely massive for both teams, almost for kind of different reasons, but somewhat in other ways. They are two teams who would have hoped to have been in better positions, I think, than they are. So there's pressure on 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 both management teams. Dundee at home would make me lean towards them, but who knows? I, I think Dundee might have enough to get this three points. I would go along with that, just because I think, like I say, I don't know whether Jason Cummings will strike up a partnership with Osmond So, but. Again, it's it's adding to attacking options. I think Paul McMullen will be a shrewd bit of business in this league. Um, and ultimately, with Charlie Adam in the team, they're in with a shout, yeah. personally. No, no matter who's up front, really. He, he could single-handedly carry them to a playoff place, in my opinion. Yeah, he's... Um... He's just something else, isn't he? I've, I've never been so wrong. Really I remember is. telling everyone that I would listen to me that he was going to flop. I've never been so wrong about it in my life. I just wanted him to flop because I was when, it, when he signed it, I was like, oh, he's going to stroll it. It's like, no, he's not. And he has kind of strolled it a little bit. So fair play to him. Anyway, let's move on to Aloha versus Queen of the South. Um, I've got this down as the sort of game Aloha need to win if they to stay up this season at home to a team down the bottom. This, this to me, looks like the perfect chance for Peter Grant. Peter Grant, I almost said that. I said it right, but I thought I said it wrong. Peter Grant to get three points um, at home. Yeah, totally agree. And there's obviously now a greater pressure on the likes of Ennis Cameron, Stefan Skugel and Alan Trouton to kind of get Aloha up and running. And like you say, with the Arbroath victory at the weekend, them obviously picking another point up in midweek, Aloha just have to get something. And I think they will, given Queens are obviously out of, well, we're out of action at the weekend, but whether that'll be, whether that'll come back to bite them, we'll wait and see. But I just, I just feel as though Aloha you're going to hate me saying about the plastic park, but it is true. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just I just feel as though Alwa, the impetus to win might just be what sees them over the line, I think. Uh, conversely for Queens though, if they go and, I mean, if they go and get the win here and say are both get beat, I mean, they're opening up a sizable gap from where it looked like they were doomed, you know, a month or so ago. They looked absolutely knackered and now they've, you know they've pulled they've pulled away a little bit. Look at their last five, and they've got three wins in the last five. Nobody in the league has got more than three wins in the last five. So I mean that tells you all you need to know, really. Um, so yeah, I mean if if AJ can can get his team to, to get three points there, it would be a big big boost for them. But I just I just think Al at home. Um, they they kind of got to win this one, and so I think they'll find a way. I said last week they're like the Hamilton of the championship. Anyway, so moving on to the final game of the weekend, which is our against them, Firm, and I'm looking forward to it. Fingers crossed I should be there, hopefully. Um, Scott Rail have buggered me, man. I was supposed to be at the game last night, but they've gone and cancelled like all their late trains, so like I couldn't get home in time, which was just hellish. But hopefully they'll be in Arbroath on Saturday. Oh, man. We've played Arbroath twice this season, meeting 3-1 in the League Cup up there, 1-0 on Boxing Day. The one on Boxing Day, we robbed them. They deserved it more than we did, I thought. Um, Bedford Cup was decent. But just going to Gayfield just gives me the fear, man. I think if you can get out there with three points, you're, it's just amazing because it's one of the toughest places to go. 
Absolutely. And I think even it's highlighted by our struggles up there. Um, obviously, that 1 0 win courtesy of your new striker, uh, Craig White. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it just a tough place to go. And with four points from the last two games, they're ultimately on a high, but a high that isn't as great as your obviously five derby victory. So yeah. I think that's got the potential to be probably probably the most underrated fixture of the weekend out, out this fixture card for me. It, so. could, it could be interesting. I just gonna, I've just got to hope that like the goal scoring touch continues. Now we've, we've found the rhythm. I hit in the back of the net, and the thing is though, uh, up until the Hearts game, we'd not been creating chances. Created a few. Ten Castle. I mean, we could have scored six, seven, eight last night with the chances we created. So we seem to have hit a bit of a, a bit of our mojo again. And what would be amazing now is if like that last sort of month where we weren't scoring but drawing games was our blip. If that was like a bad run of form for us, and that's superb, we can go and get a couple of wins. Tied in with the fact that I've predicted Wraith to get knocked back uh, at Capel. It could be a, it could be a great weekend, but equally it could go the other way. But I'll talk about that more tonight on Power Stock, but um, I think Powers will win that 2-1. Yeah, I, exact same scoreline as me, mate. I just, I was intrigued to ask you because obviously you were adamant that Par should go one up at Tynecastle. Yeah. What did you make of it? Obviously, I think you still went with that 4-2-3-1 for the five star, we were you somewhat disappointed with that prior to kick off, but then obviously, so, no, what can you say afterwards? So it, was the, so it was the same team. So Whitaker, it was the same team, but Whitaker dropped out for Scott Banks. So immediately, I was eyebrows raised a little bit. That obviously an attack and change. Banks did, did well, uh, but I don't know, man. I just felt the way we zipped the ball about was so much better. We, you know, we created chances at Tynecastle. So and Crawford got a bit of stick from some for saying that he was happy with the performance at Tynecastle, as was I. I mean. There's nothing Stevie Crawford can do if McManus is coming so close twice and Gordon's pulling off heroics. It's, you know, there's not an awful lot you can do about that. So, no, I mean, a lot of I'd wrote a piece talking about how, you know, based on a sort of poll I did with fans and stuff, and the reaction was everyone wanted to just go two up top. I mean, that's two games where we haven't gone two up top and looked really good going forward. Ryan Dow picked up an injury, stretched it off last night, and O'Hara came on. So we might get O'Hara and McManus, maybe O'Hara playing off the right. But listen, I'm, I'm happy to go with the. I'd go with the same team again. You know, they've, they've all they've all done enough to earn their place. So I'm looking forward to it. And I'm actually excited to watch the game this weekend. Whereas <laughs> I was, before last night, I wasn't looking forward to it at all. Just down in the dumps, thought we were going to get beat. <laughs> it's a great a feeling when that's back, having suffered for so long, isn't it? Oh, so good. When you just get that, it just pick, means everything better in life. You wake <laughs> yeah, up and you just does. like, everything just goes, oh, it's just amazing. What a feeling. Anyway, right, let's quickly go over to some transfer stuff because I want to kind of, we've been, we've been rambling on for ages here. But anyway, transfer talk, right. Um, what club drink had the best window? I, I, I've put this down as a question. I don't even have a fucking answer to be honest. But uh, let's maybe let's let's go right. Let's just go notable deals then for you. Let, three notable deals, Adam Kennedy, that you, you saw with this transfer window that made you go, "Oof, that was uh, that's going to he's going to be a player for them." Well, I've got to be honest. It slipped under my radar, but given the superb start that he's made, I've got to chuck Jack Hamilton to Arbroath in there. Yeah. Um, I think Jason Cummings to Dundee. If given the, you know, if given the appropriate service, I think that just screams goals. So again, a great pickup. As for my third one, oh, I, I can't comment on either of the Hearts players because I've yet to see them play. So there's there's nothing I can really say. Although I do think, obviously, this has been announced on the day of recording that Craig Whiten going to Dunfermline on a pre-contract is a great move not only for you but also for us in the sense that we didn't lose him in the January transfer window and so it, if it either... It looked like that was going to happen too, that was yeah, all that was going to get done. It did and I, I think the concerns would have then arisen had either of Nandwile or Boyce been injured, then we've only really got White in his back up and then you know it, we would have been a bit light had we lost him in this window, so is decent business from both the Pars and Hearts in, in that deal. So I'll say, yeah, Whiting to Dunfermline, Cummings to Dundee and Hamilton to Arbroath. I know that's boring with three centre-forwards, <laughs> but I can only apologise. Well, I'm going to... The Dundee one, I, I actually think it's the guy that you've mentioned a lot tonight that's the that's the main one for Dundee, but that's Paul McMullen for me. If he can oh, that's right. put a run together, you know, he's done it in the Championship before with Dunfermline. He was really good, did brilliant at Dundee United, helped him go up. If he can just add that little extra dimension to their attack and play, a bit of pace, a bit of direct running, he could make a world of difference for Dundee. So he'd be up there for me. Um, I mean, what else are we thinking here? Kai Kennedy to Rovers. 
I mean, if he can, I mean, if he can, if he can just do what he, he's threatened to do for them for the second half of the season, he could really fill that gap that Ethan Ross has, Ethan Ross has left because he was brilliant first half of the season. Kennedy could be better. Um, and I'm going to go with Scott Banks finally because I just like the look of him. Looks like a kid with lots of talent. Can't wait to see him get a run of games. Thought he looked really bright last night. And a wee bit of flair in the final third is what we are missing. So hopefully he'll add that. But yeah, Morton's transfer announcement to that because I asked earlier was just fucking hilarious. What a three, uh, three solid shouts and now obviously the six for the pain of us. So I think we've done yeah. well there, mate. Yeah, we did all right. Uh, there were six different ones. So that's, that's good. That's variety. <laughs> anyway, that'll wrap it up for today's show. I think it was anything else we need to cover. Not really. We'll be back next week. I don't know if there's any midweek games next week because I don't. I hate doing Thursdays, but Wednesday games have knackered us. Um, I don't think so. Really, really professional on air. Going to check. So Dundee play air <laughs> on Tuesday, and MRS play Alba on 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 Wednesday. So we'll see. Okay. We'll see what we do. But anyway, we'll be back next week. I uh, I'm gonna make another prediction that Adam will probably be here next week as well because <laughs> I think he's done okay again. I mean, you can you can let him know in the comments. But um, as his links will be in the comments, and uh, the, why do I keep saying your links will be in the comments? They'll be in the description. I'm so shit at this YouTube gig. It's ridiculous. Anyway. I'm just going to end this video now before I make an arse of it anymore. So we'll see you all next time. Cheerio. Why did I say cheerio to end the video? That's embarrassing. Why did I say cheerio? What's that all about? Who says cheerio? <laughs> Wait, don't even. I've, I've had two consecutive <sighs> shockers on this channel. That uh, is that's embarrassing. I've that's embarrassing. A year's worth. I don't worth. need your cheerio. <laughs>